Robert mistakes me, cashier, as other customer, offers to cut me in a robbery. I'm a convenience store cashier, and besides the occasional robbery, nothing really happens here. We've had a handful of super dramatic get-on-the-ground robberies, but most are just regular shoplifters. Because nothing really happens here, I like to make small talk with the people in the store to pass the time. Sometimes people have great stories. Sometimes we end up knowing someone in common. Sometimes it's just nice to make a person smile. The other day, I was out from behind the register stocking shelves. I was the only person in the store because weekday afternoons are usually slow and basically everyone's quit. It's getting cold here and the building still hasn't turned the heat on, so I had a hoodie over my uniform, short sleeve shirt and name tag. So, I guess I just looked like a guy browsing the aisles. But it wasn't a problem because when a customer came in, I'd say, let me know if you need anything, and that cleared it up. Maybe two came in the entire start of my shift. Just as things were wrapping up, I'd had a long dead streak. A guy about my age came in and seemed in a great mood. He also had a big hoodie, but it's cold out, so I didn't think anything of it at all. I said, let me know if you need anything, from down where I was with the shelves. And he came in and stood by me, kind of giggling. Weird, but I've seen weirder. Whatever. Finally, I said, can I help you? And he just giggles and says, hey. So I'm like, hi. And he starts talking to me about the logo on my hoodie, local sports team. We go back and forth for a bit. My side of the conversation was normal. His side was really overstated. In hindsight, it's because he was nervous, but I was kind of checked out and didn't really care at the time. Like, I'd say, he's got a good arm, but his head just isn't in it this season. And this guy would reply, oh my god, the best arm. Once in a lifetime talent, but he's not there at all. Gone. Trash. Garbage. They should just cut him. I keep stocking the shelves, not thinking at all about the odd nature of what he's saying, and instead thinking in the back of my mind, is he going to buy something or what? From there, we actually got to talking about how we got into the game and had a really heartfelt conversation about going with our fathers and sitting in the cheap seats and did actually sort of bond a little. Finally, we run out of sports commentary to make at one another though, so there was a wave of silence for a few minutes. Then he gets uncomfortably close to me and whispers, I like you a lot, you know that? So, my first thought was that this was some kind of gay thing. No problem at all if that's what you're into. It's not my scene though, so I took a healthy step back and told him thanks, but no thanks. He laughed kind of maniacally and explained to me, no. He meant he liked me so he'd be willing to cut me in on what he was currently doing. I ask what that is. He explains, ain't nobody in here. I've got my truck outside. I'm gonna load it up with beer and shit. You seem like a good dude so I'm tipping you off in case you want anything. Ain't no one here. It's easy money, bro. I couldn't believe it. He was trying to rob the store and he was telling me about it. I quickly realized his overly excited, socially inappropriate behavior must have been drugs. Rather than confront someone on drugs, in my experience, their moods can change from perky to violent really quickly. I just went with my gut and decided to play along. I knew I needed an excuse to get back behind the register, so I said, good stuff. Forget the beer though, man. I'm going for the real easy money. And hopped over behind the counter where I promptly, but discreetly, pressed the button that locks the door from the inside, followed shortly by a brand new panic button. First time I'd ever used it, hoping there wouldn't be a time. But at least I wasn't genuinely panicking yet. At this point, he's loaded both shoulders up with six packs and head for the door to make the first of what I'm sure he anticipated would be several trips. He pushed against the door with his hip and, of course, it didn't budge. And he pushed pretty hard anticipating it would swing easily, so I felt kind of bad seeing him wince. He nearly dropped the beer. He turned to me, more frustrated than scared at this point, and went, bruh, the door's jammed, can you give it a try? I was nervous to step out from behind the register in case this guy had a weapon, so I tried to deflect and was like, maybe you gotta pull it. He started freaking out and was running around the store. He was trying the back door, but it was locked as well. He was trying to climb up and reach the one tiny window we've got, but not only was it too high, it doesn't really fit a person. I kept playing dumb. Eventually, the cops came. Took a while, and the guy had resorted to hiding in the stockroom by the time they made it over. Not before first wrecking a couple aisles in his frenzy, but at least I was able to lock him in the stockroom once he went inside. They came in to arrest the guy, and he started trying to blame the whole thing on me, saying I set him up, saying I made him do it. It genuinely confused the police for a bit. So, I don't work as a robber. I do work at a gas station. Though how much longer will depend on how many more robberies I live down. Sounds like you've had some pretty crazy encounters working as a cashier. This one, you handled perfectly, I must say. You minimized the risk of you getting hurt as much as you could, whilst also protecting the store. You really deserve a raise, to be honest. Hopefully, you don't have any more people come to try robbing your store in the future. But maybe something you could take away from this is to try to stay behind your cash register at all times, especially at nighttime. Just be more prepared for something like this. An old lady mistakes a mugger as an employee. I work for a convenience store that is a strict, always comply with muggers policy. 
I think because it's cheaper for them to deal with losing whatever's in the register than fighting a suit from an employee hurt defending it. I've worked here off and on for the last five years, and I've been in the store for six robberies. They're usually pretty straightforward. Guy comes in, give me the money. We do, they leave, we call the cops, the cops don't do anything. We have cameras, but this neighborhood has such bigger problems they never follow up on the petty theft. One of those times, though, the kid didn't wear a mask, just a hoodie. Comes in with a hoodie up, young kid, couldn't have been more than 18 to 20. He paces around for a while, I guess trying to get his nerve up. I figured he was an underage kid trying to work up the courage to buy some beer at first. It was really early in the morning and we were the only people in the store. He approaches the register and says he has a gun, doesn't pull it out, was probably bluffing, and that he won't use it if I give him the money. Talking all tough about, don't try anything today, I'm not the one, etc. I pop open the register and he jumps behind the counter to take the money out. As he's doing this, an old woman comes in. Now he's getting really nervous because I didn't want the old lady to be in a dangerous situation. But before I could react, she recognizes the kid. She runs up to him and goes, Oh, Noah, hello, dear. How are you? And the kid just freezes behind the counter, hands full of cash. She's older and I guess deaf, so she's shouting, I didn't realize you'd gotten a job. Good for you, dear. You know, I just saw your mama the other day and she didn't mention it. He's like, no, I don't. But she isn't listening. Your mama never tells me anything. She's just chatting on and she starts shopping. I'm just standing there frozen, waiting to see how this plays out, with the guy still behind the register with me. The kid was almost a foot taller than me and I didn't want to get into an altercation if I could help it. She goes through and she's shopping and she goes, Noah, hon, could you help me reach this, please? So he goes over and deadass starts helping her get things from high shelves. She's like, is this really the best price you've got for this? And he's like, uh, yeah. While he's doing this, I call the cops. I think he knows I must have been doing that because he's beyond antsy. At one point, he tried to bail, but she was like, hold on, don't clock out yet. I'll just be a minute. I want to see you at work. This is so exciting. You're all grown up. So he's standing there awkward and panicked, trying to make a decision. Eventually, she goes to check out, and I scan her items, keeping an eye on him. She goes, oh no, can Noah check me out? He's my friend's son. I didn't know I was visiting him at work. Wanted to keep things cool until she was out of the store on the off chance the kid did have a weapon of some kind or wasn't stable, I just stepped aside and let him check her out. He didn't really know how to use the scanner or anything, but he got through it. She leaves. Once she walks out, he runs out of the store and jumps into a car. He didn't get any money from us. It was another 20 minutes before the cops got there, so it wouldn't have mattered either way. But that was the most memorable robbery for me, as robberies go. This is probably one of the craziest robbery stories I've ever heard. From him not having a mask to being recognized by the lady to having his name called out and having to work the store, this could not have gotten more wrong for poor Noah. I'm glad no one was harmed and fortunately no money was taken in the end. I really think the police should take these steps more seriously, as it would leave an example for others who plan to rob stores and could get them to think twice. She stole my phone. I used to work at JCPenney in my local mall, and sometimes I would go shop around the mall or in the store after my shift. This day, I was shopping in a store called Deb after my shift, and the dress code there is similar to where I worked. It was business casual and I was still wearing my work clothes. I was looking at some shirts laid out on the table, and when I was done, I quickly refolded and straightened what I messed up, because it sucks to have someone mess up your table and not fix it. This lady comes up to me, with her kid who is probably 9 or 10, as I'm walking away and asks if I can check in the back to see if they had a shirt she was holding in a different size. I apologized and told her I didn't work there. She immediately scowled at me and said she just saw me straightening that table, so I obviously worked there. I told her again that I didn't work there, I was just straightening what I had messed up, but I was sure if she went up to the registers, she could find someone to help her. She went into, I want to talk to your manager, mode. I was getting pretty fed up at this point and said again that I didn't work there and she needs to leave me alone. I then pulled my phone out of my pocket and proceeded to call my mom to come get me because I didn't drive back then. Before I could even call my mom, this lady snatched my phone out of my hand and starts screaming about how I'm disrespectful and she cannot believe I would ignore her like this and how dare I make a call when I should be helping customers and she demands to see my manager. I freak out and try to get my phone back, but she would not give it back. A manager does come over when he hears the commotion and asks what is going on and this lady immediately starts screaming about how I'm a terrible employee and should be fired and the poor guy was so confused. I finally had enough of this woman and went off. I got in her face and said, listen lady, I've already told you multiple times I don't work here, and you can't seem to get that through your thick skull. Not only are you harassing me, you have stolen my phone. If you don't give it back right now, I will have the manager call mall security. Her face was so red with rage, I thought steam was going to come out of her ears. She starts screaming again, and the manager had the good sense to go ahead and call mall security. They show up. I explain what is going on, 
The manager confirms they get my phone back and she is banned from the mall. I'm glad you were able to get your phone back, and I'm glad that lady got banned from the mall for being so rude. One less Karen to worry about. I know you were really angry, but it's really important to not lose your temper in situations like this. It's not worth getting into a fight with someone over something so trivial, especially when you're out in public. It was good that you kept your cool and didn't resort to violence or insults, because she was really testing her patience. You shouldn't have to keep repeating you don't work there for it to get the message and go find someone else. Man tries to steal my shopping cart. I was running errands and my final stop was to buy some groceries. I just got off of work and was still in my work uniform which is a black polo with a big staff across the back and my company's logo on the front of the shirt. Now, I hate walking into stores with a staff shirt on. I'm not a fan of strangers people knowing where I work or causing confusion for having a staff shirt on when I don't work at the business. For this reason, if I'm in my work shirt, I will throw on a jacket or a hoodie before I walk in someplace. This is exactly what I had done just before I entered the grocery store. So my staff shirt for the place that I do work is completely covered by an oversized varsity jacket with studs and a big tiger across the back. And I have ripped black jeans on. The uniform for the grocery store is green branded t-shirts and khaki pants. I look nothing like the staff there. Because this is the time of COVID, when I go to grab a shopping cart, I stop by the sanitizing station to wipe down the cart before I begin shopping. The sanitizing station is just inside the entrance doors of the grocery store. As I'm finishing up wiping down my shopping cart, another shopper walks in a man with a baseball cap on. The man sees me cleaning a shopping cart, walks up to me and says, oh great, thanks, and tries to grab the front of the cart and walk away. Not understanding yet that he thought I worked there, I think he's trying to steal it from me and I'm a vice grip on the back of the cart, which causes him to stumble. He whips his head back around and goes, what are you, before cutting off mid-sentence and actually looking at me, in my ripped skinny jeans and my Tiger Varsity jacket and my judging eyes. He then quietly says, oh, you don't work here before immediately turning around and walking away into the grocery store without a cart of his own. As I watched him walk away, finally realizing that he thought I was cleaning the cart for him, I see him pulling his baseball hat low down on his head in shame. He then stood in the distance by a soda display, hat low, and turns to face the shopping cart section, no doubt waiting for me to leave the area. I chuckled as I walked away to do my shopping, and when I was finally safe distance away, I did catch him out of the corner of my eye, slowly approach the carts again, shake his head slightly, and grab one. It's alright, man. We all make mistakes. It's crazy how quickly we can misjudge people. I've had similar experiences where I was with a friend and someone assumed that my friend worked at the store or restaurant we were in, even though they were wearing jeans and a hoodie, just like me. It's hard to feel bad for them because they're basically stealing your cart when you have it sanitized and they're trying to take it from you. It's great that you didn't lose your cool though, because it was obviously just an honest mistake. Dealing with a locker thief in high school. This was back in the 2003-2004 school year. Throughout the entire year, there was a crime wave of people having things stolen out of their locked lockers. Not everyone, but enough that everyone knew someone it happened to. The school's only defense about this was it was our fault for sharing locker combos with our friends. They also charged us every time we had to get the combination changed on a locker. Like after a theft, for instance. Because it was assumed to be our fault. Well, I had my graphing calculator taken out of my locker. I also never gave out my combination to anyone. Mostly because my friends were jackasses and we pulled pranks on each other all the time. So I was out $150 for the calculator and another $150 to change the combination, getting a locksmith to change out the lock. This is 2003 money, so it's a bit more than now. To anyone who has ever had to buy a TI-86 in 2003 or 2014, you'll know how much the thing costs. Well, my dad was drinking buddies with one of the county detectives. I'll call him Detective Buddy and or Uncle Buddy. He went in to talk to the school about these strings of theft going on so he could get the security camera for the day my calculator went missing and got completely brushed off as it was a non-existent problem and he must have given out his locker combination. The principal told him he would need a warrant to get the camera footage. Then when he got the warrant, the school fought the warrant in court citing student privacy. Cue the pro-revenge. Detective Buddy shows up at our house with a laptop in a laptop bag. He's like, throw this in your locker and tell everyone you know about your brand new laptop. Okay, sure Uncle Buddy. Three days later, I show up at my locker between classes and the laptop is gone, and the bag too, nowhere to be seen, as is a 24-ounce bottle of Coke, and possibly some pens. I take my phone out and text him that the laptop got taken. Stand by for the show, oh, and you reported the theft to the police, FYI. He replies back, okay. I replied, confused. I got about the rest of my day and I don't hear anything back. The following morning, Detective Buddy comes to the school with three uniformed officers and pull a student, Dave out of class as well as his mom who works in the front office. The principal is mad. I don't actually hear the cops, but the principal is pissed to no end that he had the audacity to accuse them of theft and he couldn't just take them out of his school. 
Well, turns out there was a tracker in the laptop bag, and Uncle Buddy got a warrant to search a particular house. The laptop had a value of over $1,000, making it a felony. The next afternoon, he set up a tent with a table just outside of school grounds. He also had a banner across the top. If you have had something stolen from your locker, see me. By the next morning, Dave and his mom made the paper. Apparently, Dave allegedly used his mom's login information to get onto the school network and get the locker combinations for basically everyone. Then he just opened random lockers looking for valuables to steal, if he didn't get info of a specific locker to steal from. When he set up the stand to get more people reporting thefts, he racked up an astounding number of charges. Each locker counted as a separate misdemeanor unless a stolen object was worth more than $1,000, in which case, it was a felony. In less than a week, Uncle Buddy opened and broke an investigation and they charged Dave and his mom with 9 felonies and 35 misdemeanor charges. Cool thing was that because the calculator and laptop were separate days, and the combination changed between the days, he got a felony and a misdemeanor charge off me alone. The 9 felony thefts ended up in the $12,000 range total, and the 35 misdemeanor charges were something in the range of $3,000 total in value. Now, that's an awful lot of stuff stolen, but I need to stress that this is only what was proven stolen. Like, this is what they caught him with in his possession that they could trace back to someone. They also didn't let him plead to anything. It was Podunkville's highest profile crime in years, and without a doubt, one of the worst crime sprees the county had seen in decades. Next up on the revenge, everyone who had been charged $150 to get their locker combinations changed sued the school district in a class action lawsuit. The justification was that the school did nothing to investigate the 44 proven and more than likely 200 plus cases of locker theft and then charged money to get the locker combinations changed. There was 218 people in the class, and in total, everyone got $85 at their attorney fees. The principal also lost his job for being a bonehead and not bothering to attempt to deal with the massive problem that was reported to him going on at the school. The fun thing I need to point out is that the school brought in a locksmith to change out the locks. That's why they justified charging $150. Well, the school already paid the $150 to locker, but they also had to return $100 per locker, meaning they were out $21,800, plus their legal fees for that class action suit. Next comes the criminal trial and the fallout. The prosecutor's deal was 10 years in prison, 5 in juvie and 5 in adult prison, for Dave and 15 for Dave's mom. Well, they refused that deal and went to trial. Dave got one year prison for each felony, the state minimum, and one month probation for each misdemeanor. So, 9 years plus 35 months of probation. His mom received 18 years of jail and 6 years probation. Having attended much of the best parts of the trial, I will say this. They had Dave on camera entering 20-plus lockers, and they had them in possession of stolen goods for every single charge they made against him. The judge was also not amused that there was likely other reported crimes that they got away with because they couldn't prove it or they weren't reported. Dave's mom got it worse. That was a fun sentencing to show up for. But the most important thing is that I got my graphing calculator back. It had my name engraved inside the battery compartment. I still have it as well as a cool story to tell. What a legend Detective Buddy is. He knew exactly how to draw out and catch the robber. However, the school really should have done a better job at trying to find out who it was earlier. In the end, the correct people were punished, and those affected were compensated. So really, things worked out perfectly. Dave and his mom sure regret stealing from lockers with the amount of time they are facing now. I'm also sure the school will do a better job in the future at preventing things like this happening again after the hefty fine they received. If you enjoyed these stories, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Check out the other videos on your screen right now. Otherwise, you're definitely the jerk.